Welcome back to Obsession Engineering and the 749 project. I have a bit of a confession to make. When I bought the Ducati, the idea was to do a few little tidy up jobs and get it turned around quite quickly, test ride it and then sell it. It's not quite worked out like that because I was all excited and I took it apart and I took probably more of it apart than I needed to. And then I got a little bit busy, so I put a cover over it and left it for a couple of days and that was, being conservative, six months ago. So it's kind of stalled, and I keep getting to the point where I keep telling myself it only needs a couple of days on it and it will be ready. Haven't done those couple of days though. And then of course, you can't keep putting it off because, well, I've kind of forgotten where I actually got to with it. And um, yeah, a little bit guilty. So, I'm going to take the cover off for the first time in half a year and today I'm actually going to do something productive on the Ducati. So here we go. First time the cover's been off in far too long. If I can sort of remember where I am it will be kind of useful to deciding what I do next. Well it still looks like a Ducati. The advantage to it being dry and clean in here is well, nothing's gone furry and disappeared. So there we go. Yep, it looks about the same as last time I saw it, which was a while ago. There are certain jobs I now remember doing. I did the valve clearances and I left the rocker cover off to paint it. And I have painted the rocker cover, so that can go back on. Uh, I changed the cam belts. Uh, what I might do is recheck the tension on them and make sure nothing's changed. It shouldn't have done, but you never know. While we're here, we may as well check it. Uh, I've ordered a new radiator for it, which is in a box somewhere. Uh, since, um, since it's been sat here, the fork seals now leak. So now I am definitely rebuilding the forks in it. Um, I didn't change the oil because I decided I'd do that quite late so that the oil didn't go off sat in the bike, which is probably quite good right now. Uh, I have bought another shock and serviced it. So that is upstairs in the suspension area and is ready to go back in the bike. So it's not looking too bad. Ah yes, and wheels. Um, I fitted new tyres and the idea was to fit new tyres and put them in the bike so I could at least move it off the bench six months ago. It's not been off the bench. It's a good job I've got two benches really. So I think the plan for today is probably recheck the belt tension, refit the rocker covers, might fit the nice new shock. We'll see how far we get. After all, there is no rush. So I'm just clearing the bench so I can actually get some work done and the first thing I'll do is refit this rocker cover which actually looks quite nice now I painted it and then underneath that is uh, the box of bits that have come back from the platers. So this is probably, I'm going to blame this for why the project stalled, obviously when I send stuff to the platers it takes a couple of weeks to come back and probably in that couple of weeks I put the cover on and ignored it. So we have uh, brackets, wheel spacers, um, at least one wheel nut, uh, two spindles and a big tub of fasteners, big bag of fasteners there and I can't remember where any of those go. This is going to go swimmingly. To make life a little easier I've decided to chuck all the bolts in a tray first and that way I can sift through them a little bit easier than trying to pick them out of the bag. And these are the rocker cover nuts. I suppose they're actually nuts not bolts. So they are the nuts for the rocker cover and I'm going to need 12 of those because I've done both rocker covers and I'm sure they've got three, six on each. Look up here. Yes, six on each. So. Somewhere in this tray there will be 12 of these. I'm going to start with finding those. In preparation for refitting the rocker cover, I've actually squirted a little bit of oil around the lobes of the cams and onto the rocker arms and bits so that they've got a little bit of lubrication the first time the engine turns over. And that, of course, is now dribbling out the bottom of the crankcase, the uh, cylinder head. So what I need to do is wipe all that up and brake cleaner all this off because we are going to put a thin smear of crankcase sealant around the joint for the rocker cover onto here because these are notorious for leaking. 
So as well of smearing a little bit of oil around in here, I've also been around with a bit of scotch brite and just cleaned the old bits of crankcase sealant off that had been used previously. Then I've given it a little blowout with an airline to make sure none of the sealant bits are inside the cylinder head. And so now I am actually ready to put my seal somewhere near it. But I'm not actually going to put the seal there. I'm going to put the seal on the inside of here because it's easier to get it placed in the grooves now than it is to try and arrange it on there. So I have a reasonable amount of sealant around here, but hopefully not an excessive amount because anything that when we put it together doesn't come out, any excess will go in and then when it dries it falls off and it ends up in the oil strainer, which is never, never any good. So now that I've got a smear in there, I'm going to put the gasket into the head, uh, into the cover, then I'll put a little bit more sealant around the other side of the gasket and then actually put it on the engine. So now I have a little bit more sealant on everything, and this is literally just a thin smear. And what I've also done is, as I've poked this gasket down, any excess that's on the inside, I've wiped off, so that we don't end up with loads of it in the engine. So that is now ready to go on the cylinder head. So obviously I've got to slot it into here, but there is a boss that sticks out of the rocker cover that goes behind the cam belt, behind here. So you have to sort of feed the head in at a bit of an angle and like, feed it past this post which then knocks the rocker cover gasket out of the way so you do have to be a bit careful with this. Now normally I wouldn't have this much sealant going on but these heads are notorious for leaking oil past so I am going a little bit belt and braces. So as the faces are now nice and clean so what I now need to do with this is slot this into here past the cam belt without disturbing my rocker cover gasket. So I've got to be quite delicate with it, and I'd ever so slightly forgotten that the airbox gets in the way on this one as well, for an added element of annoyance up here. So we have to give that a bit of a wiggle pass there, and it will go in a minute, I'm sure. It came out, there we go. So just before I push it all together and ruin my sealant, just making sure all my gaskets are in the correct place. And then, of course, I've got all my washers. So the washers go in here with the rubber side against the cylinder head and the metal side against the little nuts. Now, I'm not putting sealant on these at this stage because these are relatively easy to get to if they do leak and they shouldn't really need sealant on them because they're a rubber-faced washer. The next thing I'm going to do is recheck my cam belt tension. Now, when I did this before, I had an app on my phone, and at the time when I recorded that, I did my recording on my phone, so I couldn't show you it. But this time I can show you it, and I've got this and the proper Ducati tool for trying it. So I'm going to compare them back to back and see what the difference is. And I'm also interested to see if the tension is the same now as when I fitted them. So the belts on these 749s and 999s, they're at 110 hertz uh, tension. So what you do is you give them a flick, and the vibration pings up a noise and you record it on your phone or on your tension meter and then uh, we'll see what it does. So we'll start with doing it on here. Ninety two hertz. Right, so that's saying ninety one, ninety two hertz average. Now we'll try the proper posh Ducati Tekka tool, see what this is like. So press to start. 90 hertz. We'll try that again. 90. So realistically, this proper special tool and my phone are within about 2 hertz, and the tolerance is actually 5 hertz on these anyway. So I'm going to say that actually using your phone is pretty much okay for doing this. It's nice if you have the proper tool as always, but you're not going to buy one of those specifically to do one job that you can do with your phone for an app that's free. So free app wins. The only slight game with that is that the tension is wrong. Now, now I'm not quite sure why these have changed because the belt clearly shouldn't stretch but it could just be the difference in temperature between today and when I fitted them. It could be that stuff settled a little bit. The belts maybe have moved a little bit. I'm not entirely sure but what I am going to do is reset them and then we'll be dickety-boo. 126 we're getting there. Takes more adjustment than I thought. All right, I'm going to tweak it a tiny bit 
tiniest little bit tighter because the tolerance is 110, give or take five. So we'll give that a decent nip. 114, so they're in range now, 115, 114 is the top end of the scale, but it is within the range. So what I'm going to do now is talk that nut back up and double check it. The next thing I've done is turn the crankshaft around so that this cylinder is on top dead centre, and now I'm going to check the tension on this one. So what I've learnt this afternoon is the tension does vary a little bit over time, but probably not enough to worry about. The tension is different depending on whether you're actually at top dead centre or not. And my phone is easier and just as accurate as the tool from Ducati. So that's what we've learned. Don't bother buying one of those. Use your phone. Right, as in the right hand side of the bike, is beginning to look about right. Have I said right enough? Right. So, <laughs> uh, I've got the horn bracket on, the horn is fitted, the cam, cover, uh, cam belt covers are on, the breather box is back on, that's back on, it's got a new uh, plated fastener down there. I've put all the screws back in these covers, uh, and I've put the bolts back in the master cylinder that attaches it to the bracket, but I can't put the bracket on tight yet because there's one of the bolts for the exhaust is behind there and the exhaust is not ready to go on yet. So I can't finish fitting that yet and I'm not going to put that rear set on until the exhaust is on as well because it will be in the way. So on this side of the bike, until I actually pull my finger out and do some more work on bits, uh, it's about as far as we're going right now. So looking at it from here, this is looking considerably better because all of this is now clean. The only thing is, most of it will be covered up when I put the radiator back on. I've barely even been on this side of the bike yet. There are a few bits I could reattach brackets for the side stand and that sort of stuff. But what I might do before that is build the wheels up because the bolts that hold the discs on were away getting plated and now they're back. So I think I'll build the discs up onto the wheels next and then if I wanted to, I could at least put the wheels in it, although I probably won't yet. One little bonus I'm taking from me being slow doing this is that tyres have gone up in value, so I've basically made money on this brand new tyre. Bonus, sort of. So I've checked the wheel bearings, the bearings and seals all feel absolutely fine in that wheel, and I've given it the wheel a little bit of a clean, and I've also given the discs a bit of a clean. So I've given them a little bit of a wipe front and back, and when I took them off, I labelled them left and right. So this is the right hand one, that's just going to sit down there. A little bit of movement there to make sure there's nothing trapped underneath it. And I'm going to get my freshly plated bolts, put some Loctite on those, and torque them up. So front wheel is complete, so I'm moving on to the rear wheel, because we may as well do with a pair. Now I didn't take the disc off this one because the disc bolts are okay. Uh, I've checked the bearings and bits in this and they're fine and so all I need to do is attach the sprocket but I do have a new sprocket because the old one somebody had actually painted silver to hide the corrosion. Rear wheel complete and looking considerably better. Now the oddity with this bike was the rear sprocket was actually in perfectly good condition other than somebody had painted it and the chain's in really good condition but the front sprocket's quite worn. So I've got a new front sprocket as well as a rear but I'm not changing the chain because it's expensive and it has absolutely no need to be changed. But that wheel's not going in yet because there's a load of cleaning to do down the back end. So what I am going to do is just potter along on the left hand side of the bike for a little bit because there's a few engine bolts and bits like that and brackets I can fit now without having to start any really, really big jobs because it's getting quite late in the day. It's on to the side stand next, so I've refitted the bracket, the bolts and the bracket have all been plated because it's all steel and it was looking a little bit shabby. There's a couple of engine bolts back in. And... Right, the next thing I need to do is pull the springs down onto the stand. And this tends to be quite difficult because these springs are stiff. So I have a spring puller. Years and years and years ago I did this with a pair of pliers. Didn't go very well. Uh, and so... <laughs> Now I very much recommend using the correct tool and might even put a set of pair of safety specs on so that if the spring does decide to make a bid for freedom, my uh, looking eyes will be okay. Right then, let's see how awkward these are. So I've got to pull quite a lot of tension here. 
And these actually aren't too bad. I've had some before that were very, very awkward. And this is, I'm pulling enough to pull the bike on its paddock stand, so I've got to be a bit careful. And then I've got to get the chain tool out, and there we go. One side stand fitted. Now, I do like the fact that this is an overly stylized pad uh, side stand. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It doesn't need to be cast aluminium with lovely shapes and stuff in it, but it is. And that is sort of the theme on this bike. That although the original actual shape of the bike didn't go down that well when they were new, I love how much detail there is on everything. And pretty much every single bit of the bike that you can see, especially with the fairing on, has had that last little bit of attention thrown at it. It's not just been left, it's all been fettled and tweaked and just things like that. That side stand could have been plain and steel and boring, and it isn't. It's funky. So for the first few hours back on the 749, I think we've made some reasonable progress. The engine is all buttoned up, uh, I've put random bolts in places, I've built the wheels up, and so next time, which might be tomorrow, there is a reasonable amount done and a reasonable amount to go. I still have to put the fans on the new radiator and fit the new radiator. Uh, I need to put the front wheel back in so I can change the paddock stand on the front so I can take the forks out and service those. Then I need to give the front brakes a big clean because they're a little bit minging. Uh, I also need to give the swinging arm a good clean, uh, swap the shock over and give all the uh, linkage adjusters and stuff a bit of a clean as well. And then, oh yeah, then I need to do the exhaust as well. And I'll tell you what, I'll go home and think about what I really need to be doing tomorrow. Because it turns out there's still a fair chunk to get done. Thank you for watching and join me again next time when I'll be putting more of the Ducati together. I'd like to say finishing the Ducati, but I'm not entirely convinced yet.